Shaman. What's, what's, what's going on, YouTube? Washington. This is what, 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 Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is your boy Jamardi Four here once again, and you know I know the review is like really, really late, but uh, a whole lot's been going on, especially over this past weekend, and it's just a lot. But I'm gonna try to do the um, this review in conjunction with the bad girls from last night as well, so I can go ahead and get these reviews up for you guys, so you guys can watch and check them out. Um. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and get started with love and hip-hop. I'm going to try to keep it together. <clears throat> but this episode was good. I thought this was going to be the finale, y'all, but apparently not. We got one more left. So, we start off with where we left off uh, with the last episode where Nico and Mimi were talking and Mimi approached him about him, Nico, being married. And he pretty much said, I pretty much am, yeah, but I wasn't planning on telling you. There was no need to tell you. Uh, if you never asked, I wasn't going to say anything. You know, pretty much something like that. And it's just like, Mimi, <laughs> it took you ten times as long to figure out what people figured out a season ago. So, <clears throat> it's your own fault, Mimi. We tried to tell you. And Zito and his bachelor party, and, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, him having a whole full tattoo of Thiefy, Althea, Hothea, whatever you want to call her today. And Kirk asks about the prenup. He's like, uh, we don't need no prenup because prenup puts like voodoo on your marriage and shit. And I definitely can see how people can, um, well, how people can view that because I have uh, had that conversation with a friend of mine and it's like, when you get married, it's almost like depending on whether or not you sign a prenup is depending on where both of you are when you decide to get married. If one is up here and the other one's around here, it would be in this person's best interest to sign a prenup. I'm sorry. Just because you really, you really don't know. And you don't want to go into a marriage assuming it's going to be over. But real, business is business. You don't want to be working 30 plus years, working your business up, making all this money. For somebody who could come in and for some, if they could just do you wrong and dirty and then just take half of that shit that you just worked so hard for. So if y'all are like around the even plane, then, you know, you don't have to sign a prenup because really neither one of you should, should it come to, you know, a negative outcome. Neither one of you would worry about, you know, um, having to be what, losing a lot because you both had about the same thing when you're going into it. So that's just always how I felt about it. Um, <clears throat> Jocelyn wakes up Stevie after that whole night of drinking and just having fun with a whole bunch of bitches. And she's already talking about, you know, uh, was Althea there? Like, did you fuck Althea? Like, are you going to, was she one of the strippers at the club? And <laughs> Jocelyn is just after like one of them old, ang uh, anxious and just insecure girl, which she has every right to dealing with Stevie J ass. There's really no, and we figure out later on the episode, she had every reason to feel some sort of a way. But, um, he wants to go to LA to work in the studio with Snoop Dogg. Uh, and she's like, well, you tried to ask Benzino to go? Like, why you can't ask me to go? Like, what the fuck's going on? Like, what you fuck, are you gonna fuck some other bitches in LA? And all this other shit. And pretty much what happened, he ended up taking her to LA and leaving Benzino. And so, Benzino felt the way about that. It was talking to Thiti. Uh, I'm just going to call it that because that's what the fuck I wrote down. Uh, he's singing some broken-ass English song. And Thiti's like, what the fuck is that? And he was like, I don't even know. It's something that Jocelyn be saying. And she was like, uh, that bitch can't even cry in English. I was like, girl. <laughs> I was, look. Jocelyn do be speaking her own language because he said his, uh, Benzino said his father was Puerto Rican and he played the song and even he couldn't even figure out what the hell she was saying. So, Jocelyn, girl, it's not like you just have bad English, you just have bad communication, period. Whatever language you're speaking. Has, well, I ain't even gonna try to give it a name because I couldn't even come up with nothing. Tammy and Waka are trying to get their fertility thing going on and get this baby and whatever. And it, pretty much their whole thing is boring. I, there's nothing to really talk about other than the fact that they're trying to have a baby and that Mama Deb wants to plant three triplets in Tammy's uh, uterus. And Tammy looked at her like, girl, 
We are already pushing it with two, bitch. Don't. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> Carly Red took takes Jock off the song. And pretty much, uh, uh, who was it? Um, Kalina and what's the other girl's name? Um, what is that bitch name? Rashida, girl, I couldn't call her name to save my life. Was asking, pretty much trying to figure out from Carly Red, is taking him off the song personal more so or business? Because if it's all personal, then it may not even benefit you in the long run. Like, he, <laughs> you shouldn't really, you know, operate in the music business all personal because, like Kalina said, the business, the music business is brutal and pretty much thrives off of loyalties and character. Like, if you show signs of being fucked up, then it's like, don't nobody gonna want to deal with you and then you're gonna be blacklisted. So, and I would believe her because she would know. <laughs> um, and really, I think I'm, I thought I was going to spend more time on this episode. It was pretty much a straightforward shit. Uh, Mimi talks about to Erica and Arian about the whole marriage thing, and she was already prepared and sat down, ready to be defensive because she already knew that she didn't talk to all this shit and all this shit about to come and hit the motherfucking fan. But then it's like, okay, they admitted to her. Or she admitted about the whole marriage and things or whatever. But then, this is the, this is the kicker. Mimi says that the uh, company that bought the sex tape said that, I guess, whatever their initial video was, there was an initial video that apparently was homemade, but they needed more footage. And so... They got the production up the up the ante on the production that has and got them more footage, but she was still trying to pass it off as only being one just sex tape that they just randomly decided to do because they're you know together and this is what couples do and blah blah blah. Child, and when she gonna say that? Why is it that when Arian and me or Erica are looking like, uh, well, bitch, this isn't what you said. Like, why didn't you just say this from the get go? She was like, well. I didn't feel like I needed to. I felt like it was none of y'all business. And then after that, she just started to go off on area talking about some, you don't, uh, because I think what happened was she mentioned something about uh, Eva. Like he didn't have Eva's uh, thing in mind. And that's when she just got set off. She was like, you know, I don't need anybody. I got Eva. I, you know, I got this, that, and the form. Like, I don't need you. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You're not in my shoes. And I'm just like, hold up. Well, I was everyone would be like, oh, hold up, bitch, calm your badge. Okay, you were doing the motherfucking most. I ain't even say all that <laughs> shit. For you to be getting all loud and defensive and shit, hold the fuck up. Okay, but you know, Arian let it slide. But then she tried to storm off and pretend like, oh, they're judging me and shit. Well, hell, you giving them all the ammunition to judge you, bitch. Shit. <laughs> you lied. About something stupid, like. If they was trying to support you and whatever it was that you were doing, as you just tell the truth, it would have been different. But oh well, girl. Stevie J and Snoop Dogg do this song called DNA. I don't. I think. I guess Stevie J was singing. I guess. But anyways, the part about this scene was that uh, <laughs> Stevie J admits to fucking Althea, which. We kind of assume would be true. I guess some of us had maybe some doubt just because he kept denying and denying and denying. But then again, it's like, why would she lie? Like, why would she lie, some, say something like that, and she's supposed to be with this person's best friend? Like, it would fuck it up if that wasn't true. So, he pretty much says that, you know, he was telling Snoop, like, yo, I'm about to be the best man at my dude's wedding. But, you know, the guy that she's, I mean, the girl that she's, uh, ooh, full on pronouns. The girl that he is marrying, there we go, I know her. And he's like, I, you're like, you know her? He's like, I know her. <laughs> and he's like, like, well, shit. And long story short, uh, Snoop Dogg tells him that pretty much you got to come clean. And he was talking about how, you know, as you get older, you realize what's more important and how he used to. You know, always go backstage at his end of his shows, and he don't even go backstage no more because he needs to go to the next location to have energy for the next show and stuff. And he's like, you know, if you got, if you want to keep Jocelyn happy, you got to keep, you know, you got to tell her tonight, tell her before the wedding, 
tell Benzino, you know, just come clean before this wedding goes down. And he says that not only did he fuck her, but he fucked her at Benzino's crib. Woo! Bitch! I was like... Hmm. That's ultimate disrespect. Like, not only... Well... Did they did they specify the timeline? Like, were they together? Or I guess this was in the past, but... Why would she be at Benzino's crib if they weren't together already? Maybe it's something that I don't know. If you did that while they were still together, you are... Well, that don't make no sense. Because she said it happened a long time ago. Somebody lying. Something don't make sense. I don't understand. Did he, did he know Althea? How old did he know Althea? I don't know. Somebody explained that to me. I'm getting confused. But, uh... Jock shows up to this Carly Red shoot. And Carly Red singing this damn Heartbreaker song. Anyways, moving right along. Uh, he, <laughs> she's at the video shoot just standing there in some lights and a motorcycle. And I'm like, this shoot looks dull as fuck. Like, uh, is, is she going to move? Is she just a statue and just going to sit here and move her lips to the lyrics the whole time? Now, I know you shoot certain stuff all the way through in one outfit and I guess you change. But it's just like, can something else be going on other than just wind and lip? Thinking, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just how I look at stuff. Whatever. But the real tea was spilled when Mimi met with Nico's old roommate. Y'all remember the one that Kate Michelle said was gay? And then when she, <laughs> when he tried to show up and be like, what did you say? What did you say? And thought she was going to be quiet. She was like, oh, I thought you were gay. You know? <laughs> that shit was fucking hilarious at the time. Anyway, uh, his name was Johnny and whatever. And Johnny pretty much says that, hey, Nico, yes, Nico's married. Nico's been with this bitch for about 10 plus years. They have like an emotional connection. They do business together. They do this. They do that. They do ABC, XYZ, Elevate, no motherfucking P. And so Mimi is just like, oh, oh, oh. and Johnny's like, bitch, I thought you knew. I thought you knew because I didn't know the capacity of the child relationship. And me and him fell out because after the whole whatever that shoot was that Mimi was a part of fell through, like I was really shocked. But after that fell through, it's like he said he saw another opportunity, which was you. And so he started to change his whole agenda. And then we just stopped fucking with each other no more. And so now Mimi's like, oh, Nico is my new enemy. I can't believe it's one thing to hear from my girls who don't like Nico. But it's a whole nother thing when it's somebody who actually knows Nico. I just, the Mimi impressions always get me. If it's not my own, it's somebody else that I watched that always killed me. But basically, John is like, he was trying to say he's going to try to get her on film. And that there's probably, in addition to this tape that we have that's leaked out that she knew was happening, there's probably a slew of other tapes that happened that he got that she was unknowingly being filmed, which are probably like alleged, like real sex tapes. But. Mimi, you did this for money. I know you tried to say you don't know what's going through. I guess your main business fell through or whatever, girl, but... Girl, just... I hope you... you Every season, you've just done something stupid as far as, you know, these men is concerned. So whoever it is that you decide to date, if there's a season four, which I'm pretty sure there will be, but whoever it is, I'm, I need you to get together because... Girl, no. But anyways, you guys, thank you guys so much for being patient. Uh, I probably will want to talk about what it is that happened and what's going on in another episode of Dear Diary because of, you know, I'll just have to talk about it then. Because, uh, yeah, it's it's been, it's been fucking with me for days now. So, but yeah, I'm going to try to go ahead and record... Uh, Bad Girls Club right after this and try to get these up hopefully by later on tonight so you guys can have it. Uh, but thank you guys so much for being so patient. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the Bad Girls Club review. Bye bye. Like, share, subscribe. Jamar, Washington, Washington, Washington.